want to wish you a massive congratulations on your one year anniversary. It is so amazing. Well done. You've done so well. Such good work. I want to wish you all the best for the future and sending all my love and kisses.
Happy Halloween! Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See ya. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Casa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today's show is also being replayed exclusively on the Jeff Meacham Network. Thank you very much, Mr. Meacham. And today I'm going to be discussing 1984's The Muppets Take Manhattan, starring Louis Zorich, Juliana Donald, Lonnie Price, Jim Henson, Frank Oz, Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Dave Goles, Steve Whitmire, Art Carney, Dabney Coleman, Elliot Gould, Gregory Hines, John Landis, Liza Minnelli, Joan Rivers, and Brooke Shields. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, today's episode is also being broadcast, replayed on the Jeff Meacham Network. Thank you very much, Jeff, for allowing me to come to your viewers in the spot that is occupied every other week by the dads, not always on wrestling. 
So once again, thank you for allowing me that. And today we're going to talk about the final theatrical Muppets film, not counting Follow That Bird, which was Sesame Street, to feature both Jim Henson and Richard Hunt before their untimely passings in 1990 and 1991, respectively. And as our movie opens, the Muppet Gang is graduating from Danhurst College, and they entertain their fellow graduates with their theatrical production of Manhattan Melodies. Someone in the audience suggests that they take the production to Broadway. So the Muppets decide to head to New York, and when they arrive in Manhattan, the group meets Martin Price, a big-time producer. But the police arrive and reveal that he is actually a wanted con artist named Murray Plotsky. Plotsky is arrested, leaving the hopes of the Muppets dashed. They try other theatrical producers, but to no avail, which leads to their morale and finances taking a nosedive. When Kermit snaps at the Muppet game, they begin to feel like they are becoming a burden to him. So the Muppets agree to go their separate ways, searching for new occupations, although Miss Piggy secretly remains in Manhattan to keep an eye on Kermit. Although Kermit is disappointed by the departure of his friends, he vows to make the show a hit and enlists the assistance of diner owner Pete and his daughter Jenny, who is an aspiring fashion designer, as well as the diner's staff of rats led by Rizzo. Kermit attempts to promote the show first by posing as an eccentric producer, bragging about the quality of the musical. But the producer that he meets throws the script in the trash can after Kermit makes his grand exit. Kermit then poses as a famous playwright by having the rats insert a caricature picture of him at Sardi's restaurant, replacing the spot formerly occupied by Liza Minnelli. When Minnelli comes in and notices it missing, she asks Vincent Sardi Jr. if she did something wrong to have it removed. Once the rats are exposed, Sardi discovers Liza's picture near Kermit, which causes Kermit and the rats to get thrown out of the restaurant. Kermit begins to receive letters from his friends, informing him where they are and what they're up to. And while in Central Park, Jenny comforts Kermit about his losses, while an envious Miss Piggy watches. When a thief steals her purse, Miss Piggy borrows a pair of roller skates and gives chase until she is able to capture the thief. In the process, Kermit discovers that Piggy is still in New York and has been spying on him. But they reconcile and make up after a brief argument. Piggy takes on a job as a waitress in the restaurant, and then Kermit receives a letter from producer Bernard Crawford, who is interested in Manhattan Melodies. However, Kermit discovers that the letter was actually written by Bernard Crawford's son, Ronnie Crawford, who is struggling to prove himself as a producer but he believes that Manhattan Melodies is just what he needs to establish himself as a name in the field. Bernard is hesitant, but agrees to fund the show for his son as a favor. Thrilled at the development, Kermit begins to head back to the diner, but becomes so distracted that he walks into oncoming traffic and is hit by a car. Pete sends telegrams out to the other Muppets, summoning them back to New York, only to discover that Kermit has disappeared. At the hospital, Kermit's doctor discovers that he has amnesia. 
Kermit heads off to start a new life, and he makes his way to Madison Avenue, where he meets Bill, Gil, and Jill, a trio of frogs who work in advertising. The trio offers Kermit a job when he is able to come up with a slogan for their advertising campaign. He accepts the job and begins going by the name of Phil. The rest of the Muppets search Manhattan for Kermit, with Gonzo even attempting to enlist Mayor Koch of New York to assist them. Bill, Gil, Jill, and Kermit end up visiting Pete's diner one day, where Kermit's friends recognize when he begins to play the show's opening number with spoons on glasses. They discover that he is with a group of frogs in the very next stall, and they kidnap him away from his new friends. On opening night at the Biltmore Theater, the Muppets try to help Kermit remember who he is. When Miss Piggy tells Kermit that they are in love and to be married, Kermit laughs at the thought of being in love with Miss Piggy. Fed up with failure in trying to get Kermit to remember who he is, Miss Piggy karate chops him, which ends up restoring Kermit's memory. As the Muppets take their places for the opening number of their performance, the Muppets ask Kermit if their new friends from their new walks of life could watch the show from backstage. Kermit finally realizes that what the show was missing, what the show needs, is more characters. So he suggests that the Madison Avenue frogs and assorted dogs, bears, chickens, and others become background actors in the production. The show begins and it is a rousing success and it culminates in what is intended to be a staged wedding between Kermit and Miss Piggy, with Gonzo as the minister, except a real minister appears to perform the ceremony. All of the Muppets, Sesame Street characters, and even Uncle Traveling Matt from Fraggle Rock are present for the wedding and watch Kermit and Miss Piggy get married as our film draws to its close. Now, this film is best known for two things. Number one, The Wedding of Kermit and Miss Piggy, which basically launched them into the stratosphere of pop culture, even more so than they already were, because now Kermit and Miss Piggy were officially married finally after all these years. And second, the introduction of the Muppet Babies during a dream sequence and the song, I Will Always Love You. Those two things right there are probably what this film is best remembered for. But I mean, coming off of the heels of the great Muppet caper, and what a disappointment that was, at least for me. Muppets Take Manhattan really just picked up the fumble and ran for a touchdown because... Muppets Take Manhattan is so good. Such a great and strong story here. The songs are phenomenal, very memorable. Together again, saying goodbye. The, the big finale of somebody's getting married, he'll make me happy. I will always love you. And You Can't Take No for an Answer by Dr. Teeth and the Mayhem Band. All of those songs outstanding in their own right and far more memorable than the ones from The Great Muppet Caper three years earlier. I don't recall who did the music for this one, but definitely, in my opinion, much better of a soundtrack than the predecessor. The cameos were outstanding. Um, my favorite ones, probably Dabney Coleman 
in the beginning as Martin Price, Murray Plotsky, the con artist, and Gregory Hines as the man who Miss Piggy borrows the skates from. And then Brooks Shields' cameo is pretty cute also, with one of the rats asking her if she believes basically in interspecies love and she makes a comment about how she's dated a few rats, if that's what he means. I felt that was a really cute little comment there. I actually have vivid memories of seeing the Muppets take Manhattan in theaters. I want to say it's the first Muppet movie I saw in theaters. I would have been about eight years old, seven or eight, depending on release date. I don't think I saw Muppet Caper in theaters. And I was probably still too young at the time of its release to see the Muppet movie in theaters, as I would have been just barely three years old, depending on release, two or three years old. But I distinctly have memories of seeing the Muppets take Manhattan in theaters. And for the longest time, this was my favorite Muppet movie until I saw the Muppet movie and I just gravitated towards it so much because of everything within it that I discussed two days ago. But The Muppets Take Manhattan is a great swan song of sorts for both Jim Henson and Richard Hunt. In fact, when it comes to my rating of The Muppets Take Manhattan, I'm going to give it four out of five stars. The only thing keeping it from taking it up to five is that I feel like it's very dated. You know, it, it doesn't withstand the test of time in the same vein that the Muppet movie does. You know, there's, there's so much 80s imagery inside it, which is great for nostalgia. Don't get me wrong. I love the 80s. But... It's not as timeless as the Muppet movie is, at least in my opinion. What do you guys think out there? If you're watching the premiere, let me know. Leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Whatever you do, though, when you get out there on social media, let's try to get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns, hashtag Jeff Meacham Network, and of course, the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Statboy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you guys get out there. Do what that commercial just told you. Go to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the official merchandise of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood. Get you your Renegade J.J. Williams shirt. Dad's not always on wrestling. Statboy Sports Bar. Hashtag Statboy Approved. Hashtag shenanigans. Get you your official merchandise of the Jeff Meacham Network. Three different designs of the Jeff Meacham Network logo for you to choose from, along with talk wrestling, Meachamania, so much more. Get out there. Show your love and support. While you're showing your love and support, do what that ticker tells you. If you enjoy my content, my daily videos, go to that PayPal. Send me a few bucks as a donation. Keep in mind, I'm still mo not monetized. I'm trying to get my viewership hours up, but it's a long and winding road. I'm doing the best I can with it. If you don't want to send me any money via PayPal, I understand. 
but you still want to show your love and support, go to the Linktree link that scrolls along the bottom of the screen here. Click on the link for my Amazon movie wish list. Select a movie for me. When it comes in the mail, I'll open it up live on Renegade Recap, and I'll give you guys a shout out. And likewise, when I factor it into one of my theme months, and I can sit down and watch it, review it, I'll give you guys another shout out. And I'll show you guys the same amount of love and support that you guys show to me. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when we take a trip to the high seas and we discuss Muppet Treasure Island, starring Tim Curry as well as the regular Muppet game. You're not going to want to miss out tomorrow. Right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel, right back here on Renegades Reviews, when we take a look at the Muppets' take on the classic Treasure Island story. To all my loyal fans and viewers out there, tuning in, watching the premiere, leaving your thoughts and comments over here, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you guys. Likewise, all my loyal fans and viewers out there, turning in a little bit later in the day, watching on demand, leaving your thoughts and comments down here. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you guys. I appreciate all my loyal fans and viewers. You tune in on a daily basis. Join me, watch me, and enjoy my content. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time.